what were the tangible benefits? Why did the cost balloon $54 million? And why is it, why are taxpayers on this much of a hook for an app when you have apparently two different techies who are able to develop this thing within a few days? Hey, this is the Canadian Taxpayers Federation podcast. I'm Chris Sims. I'm here with Franco Terrazano. So Franco, I saw this in the newspaper this uh, past week or so, and my head nearly fell off. So walk me through this, the Arrive Can app, okay? Lots of people love to hate on this thing, but there's a big <laughs> financial price to this thing too. Yep. How did this work? We it we actually had somebody be able to develop it for two hundred and fifty thousand, but we wound up spending fifty something million. Walk me through this. Yeah, some software developers they uh, they decided to spend the Thanksgiving weekend yeah. making their own versions of the arrive uh, the arrive can app. Uh, it took them about two days. <laughs> Okay, now I am saying this as a fellow nerd, but that's one of the nerdiest things I've ever heard. That, hey, buddy, we have a long weekend. What do you want to do? Cook some turkey, have some beer? No, <laughs> let's make a software app. Um, why did they do this? Okay, so uh, there was these developers Hold on. Backstory, backstory, backstory. So the Globe and Mail, the Globe and Mail uh, produces what is turning out to be a bombshell article that shows that the Arrive Can app cost uh, is costing us taxpayers fifty four million dollars, which is double the cost than what Ottawa originally divulged to the public. So you have these like nerdy developers, I guess, who are sitting around. They they saw the Globe and Mail story. Uh, they thought the costs were absolutely ridiculous. So then they just tried to make the app again and see how much it would cost them um and turns out they did uh prove that these costs are quite ridiculous i mean look over the thanksgiving weekend uh, a single techie one single techie managed to recreate the arrive can app in about two days meaning if you start on friday after work he, uh the individual was finished before thanksgiving dinner on sunday Oh, man, just to prove that it's a crazy waste of money. <laughs> Be still my beating heart. Those are the types of folks who need doing this. So again, for folks who don't know what this thing is that we're talking about, this Arrive Can app, um, this was the COVID app that everyone was forced to fill out to get back into Canada. So if you dare to go to the United States of America for whatever reason, mm -hmm. to get back into your country, okay, you couldn't just have your passport. You had to fill out this Arrive Can app. I had to do it myself. It was a complete nightmare and it malfunctioned. It was awful. The feds removed that requirement uh, earlier this month. But again, just how much did this cost us? This this app that barely worked and everybody hated on. Fifty four million. Fifty four million dollars. And again, that's uh that's twice than what the costs that were originally told to the public a little bit earlier on. Um, now, look, remember, that's $54 million is, is what it's costing uh, taxpayers. And it took a techie about two days to make this app. And look, I'm sure that techie, I'm sure he's a smart guy. I'm sure he's a really smart guy. I probably cheated <laughs> on him in math class back in the day. <laughs> But look, look, it's not like this individual is a one of a kind super genius, right? We're not talking about uh, the reincarnation of Albert Einstein. Maybe we are. But here's why I say that, um, because another Toronto tech company also saw the Globe and Mail news article, also thought it was so ridiculous. So simultaneously, without knowing the other developer, um, also asked its employees if they could recreate the Arrive Can app. OK, so turns out this other Toronto tech company got its employees to also re recreate the app in about two days. OK, so you have this one like single developer who was able to recreate the app in two days. And then another Toronto tech company was also able to recreate uh, the tech app in a couple of days. Um, now, I talked about the the bombshell Globe and Mail report, but there was yeah. also another article from the National Post. And I saw a quote from the National Post or, or a piece of writing in that story that just absolutely got my blood boiling. And I'm going to read it for you here. OK, quote, given that Arrive Can is a relatively simple text based screening app, its raw development costs could conceivably have been delivered for under two hundred and fifty thousand dollars some say chris some say the de raw development costs were about two hundred and fifty thousand yet it's costing taxpayers 54 million dollars what's that thing you always say just add just add government mm. okay so to recap we had two separate teams of lovable nerds well don't call them teams like there's literally just one guy 
in his basement, I guess. Like, I don't know, maybe mom's basement. Who knows? No judgment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> None here either. Okay. So two lovable nerds took it upon themselves over the long weekend, Thanksgiving long weekend, unbeknownst to each other. So they didn't know each other were doing this. They were each able to reproduce this app, right? Which is like a text-based app of, you know, are you smuggling COVID into the country? No, like you have to <laughs> click a couple of buttons. Um, so not only that, but now we're hearing that they actually could have done it for around $250,000. How did the Trudeau government spend more than $50 million? That's the $54 million question, isn't it, Simmer? Um, so look, I mean, look, the raw development cost $250,000. Now, I have been seeing some people on social media saying, well, you know, it's easier to uh, recreate an app than it is to actually create the app from the get-go before anyone else does it. And look, I'm not a techie, honestly, I don't know. But um, when it's when some people say the raw development costs are 250000 and then I see the final government price tag of $54 million, look, man, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but, you know, that has me scratching my head. Um, but here's where it gets even more bizarre. Um, in the last federal budget, the Trudeau government earmarked, I believe it was $25 million for maintaining the Arrive Can app. But of course, the Globe story shows that the true cost is closer to 54 million. So the costs are more than double what the government originally told taxpayers. You know what, Chris? One day, just one day, I'd like to wake up in my beautiful studio apartment downtown, get out of bed, walk two feet to the fridge, have have some breakfast and see a news story just one day that says, hey, look government program actually comes in under budget efficiencies found just one day i'd like to see that well my friend that would likely be april fool's day <laughs> it would because you're not going to read that i'm sorry to say so but again we need to stress this they had earmarked 25 million they actually blew it by double more than double mm -hmm. we're also pointing out that these two techies were able to do it in a couple of days and could have done it for around two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, so a fraction of a fraction of the actual cost to taxpayers. Where did this money go? Well, yeah, that's that's the question, right? Um, but you know, it's it's hard to answer it because of the lack of transparency, mm. really the secrecy that that is involved here. Now, the company that received the most federal funding in the development of this app. <laughs> It has around five employees, has around a handful of employees, very few employees, and they rely very heavily on subcontractors. Mm. Look, I, I don't know what the best way is to develop an app. I don't know what the most efficient way is to develop an app, but here's the problem. The government won't reveal the identity of those subcontractors, okay? So taxpayers are paying the bills. We deserve to know who got those secondary contracts, so to speak, right? And even yeah. more troubling, when you really consider what Arrive Can really is all about, is that there's a lack of transparency, not just in corporate contracts, but there's a lack of transparency involving people's private healthcare information. I mean, many people rightfully want to ensure uh, protection of their own uh, private information like this, but there's a few other issues, okay? So in one of the Globe stories, uh, they were able to identify another problem, and it's that the value of some of these IT contracts increased dramatically uh, through amendments after they were awarded, right? So they apparently awarded contracts to certain companies, and then for whatever reason, uh, the cost of the contract increased afterwards. Now, another problem, this time, uh, quoting again the National Post, um, the federal government managed to outsource the app's development to no less than 23 companies, eight of which raked in a commission um, of, of at least $1 million. 23 companies? Yep, 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 yep. Why? Like, okay. We need answers to this. Um to play devil's advocate a little bit, though, uh, it was COVID. It's the fog of COVID. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bad stuff is happening. Um, did we need this app? Is $54 million what we had to spend in order to create this app to let Canadians back into their own country? Okay, first of all, so two things there. First of all, I, I get this all the time, and I was on radio talking about this uh, this issue, and 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 the host asked me a similar question, said, "Well, hey, fog, you know, fog of COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to pump money out the door." Um, 
okay, that would be an okay argument in March or April of 2020. Yeah. As a recording, it's October 13th, 2022. Okay, so at least a year into COVID and uh, we're well now more than two years into COVID and, and we're still hearing stories like this. Right. So, hey, so man, I don't they're think moving at the speed of government. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that is right. But look, when you ask if this is a necessary cost or not, or if the if the yeah. pros outweigh the cons, well, how can we judge this? I mean, um, the government hasn't made the case and but even more from a common sense angle i mean if there's you know a few developers that are able to recreate the app in two days someone says the raw development cost of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and now we find out uh that the app is costing taxpayers 54 million i don't know seems to me like there probably could have been a more efficient way to get this thing built okay um but also it's not like a Rive can didn't have its flaws. It's not like there weren't hiccups. It's not like this was the most perfect app. Fifty four million dollars later, I and remember hearing loved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, look, I remember hearing a story this summer uh, that there was like a technical error with the app, and the app ordered what was it, ten thousand plus travelers into mandatory quarantine, despite the fact that they had filled their vaccine information um, correctly. Um, yeah. Right, but but look, I mean. Right now, we're still waiting on the government to provide answers. What were the tangible benefits? Why did the cost balloon $54 million? And why is it? Why are taxpayers on this much of a hook for an app when you have apparently two different techies who are able to develop this thing within a few days? Yeah, uh, you raise great questions. Uh, this is a real thing. I heard from tons of people about this. And even when I was crossing the border back in from Washington State to BC, I had everything filled out fine much to my chagrin. Yeah. Um, but they still had, it still malfunctioned. They still had to pull me into the office for questioning. They had mm. to phone up Health Canada, like on some bat phone back to Ottawa. And my daughter who was riding with me, who again had all of her papers and documentation was still ordered incorrectly by this app to quarantine for two days. And I had to fill in the thing every single day to say, you know, where are you? What are you doing? It was bizarre. Even though the human being border guard was like, yeah, none of this makes sense. You're free to go, but this thing is gonna ding on you every day and you're gonna have to fill it out. There's thousands of people who had that. So, you know, if this hadn't cost us so much money and anguish, um, this would be a joke. So who's gonna be held accountable? This sounds like a boondoggle. How do we hold these folks accountable? Well, almost as we're recording, uh, the news just broke that opposition MPs uh, are, are are pushing into uh, a committee investigation into this. Uh, the conservatives, the liberals and the NDP. So even if the liberals are not in favor of a committee investigation into this, there's still enough votes to actually f afford it. A and that's a very good thing. We actually need to have the investigation because taxpayers have some answers that we deserve, right? I mean, number one, if it took a developer two days to make an app and raw development costs are 250K, uh, how, how in the world would the government manage to spend $54 million on the app? Um, the another question that we need is, is the company that received the uh, most amount of money, they're called GC Strategies. Well, how much money did they actually receive um, for the creation and their mm -hmm. role in developing the app. There's some questions around the actual total amount that we need to know. Um, also, who do they subcontract the work out to? And um, there's some there's some story suggesting that the company also received a sole sourced contract. So why were there any sole source contracts to begin with? So those are just some of the questions. Again, there's been a lack of transparency in this whole process. So taxpayers deserve answers to these fairly basic questions. And that's why it's a good idea that we're seeing opposition MPs push for this committee investigation. It is very good. Again, the idea of social contract, that should be like not expensing booze on taxpayers' dime. This should be a no-brainer. We should not have to keep on explaining this to adults who work as members of parliament and who work in cabinet. So the good news out of this, folks, is that it sounds like it's going to go to committee. And as we are seeing, uh, our committees actually have a lot of power. They can subpoena witnesses. Everything is on the record. It's translated. It's recorded. All the parties are at the table. Uh, so that's the good news out of this. Folks, if you're annoyed uh, that we spent around $54 million on something that apparently could have been done for a quarter million bucks by a couple of people over the long weekend, pick up the phone, email your member of parliament, tell them you want answers to this now. Thanks, Franco.